right, time to finish this bit of raw footage and maybe complete the next batch as well. And the cannon is all the way over there. That's gonna be a bit troublesome. Still, it could have easily been a lot worse. Right, too much to hope that we'd be able to break those rocks with a basic bomb. Not that scanning the rocks told us explicitly what we need to destroy them, or that killing those bats just waiting up there gave us any healing items when we're still missing over an energy tank's worth of health. Well then, is there any way we could make it fall apart faster? It's possible there's something behind those statue heads after all. Well, at least I managed to get an energy tank, which then led to us gaining full health that way. Ugh, I kinda need to fast forward to get back to where we were since, well, I've gotten a little impatient this far into the game. Still, I definitely like an energy tank more than a missile expansion, that's for sure. Especially since this game seems more than a little stingy when it comes to giving us healing items. Well, hello there! It's a pleasure to meet you. In fact, the lackluster performance of the Ing is making me feel like maybe this game should have done more to make the space pirates more prominent here. The conflict to save this world just hasn't been doing it for me, and it's actually kind of frustrating in its own way. Where's the survivor for that group? Ah, there you are! And the dropship comes back down to cause us some more trouble, apparently. Come on, you bastards! It's not like we have to worry about running out of ammo for the power beam here. I would have thought that guy would at least try to dodge the second charged shot. even notice that laser gate was there, and I'm more interested in finding regular earling items than figure out what possible upgrade is just waiting for us on the other side of the laser gate. Definitely an indicator for just how punch drunk I've gotten this far into the game. I probably should have destroyed a few of those crates with my alternate beams to gain some more ammo from them. Ah well, time for us to have the super missile, which notably has a different icon for it than it did when we grabbed it back in the first Metroid, at least if I'm remembering correctly. That's certainly going to open some doors for us. Well, I certainly like the sight of a super missile explosion, but much like the other times when it's just something that expends regular missile ammo, I doubt I'll use it much in combat. Now. Let's see what's going on in the light side version of this temple. Please. 
Right. More rain and another dead Luminoth right in front of the energy collector. Really wish I could find it in me to feel surprised by that. I'm sure his last stand was rather epic, but it doesn't change the fact that he stood alone in here. Or the fact that we're about to hear from the dead again. Huh. Don't think either of the other Luminoth we've heard from cross their arms like that. The entire planet is crippled by this war, so that's no surprise. Flooded, huh? I don't suppose you have uh, a gravity suit around here somewhere, do you? Because as much as I appreciate the odd generosity of us getting the super missile without having to go through a boss of some kind, I'm pretty sure that we need extra mobility and visibility in the water some more than that. And of course, the water in Dark Aether is gonna act like acid. The very air acts like acid! Why should I be surprised by that the water does too? Not to mention the fact that the ink can seemingly turn into a liquid, and it's generally a bad idea to touch the enemy in the Metroid games, where we have absolutely no means of melee attacking them. Well, it's going to be a little tough for it to guide our aim if it's still in the enemy's version of the planet. Still, I appreciate the sentiment. Yeah, I definitely noticed that machine. It's part of how we managed to get this far. So, instead of trying to come up with some form of yin and yang, you chose to just siphon the energy from the dark version of the world. Granted, the Ing have been pretty hostile, and I'm sure the first meeting or two with them wasn't any more pleasant than our first meeting with them. Still, feels a bit awkward that a race of supposedly peaceful beings created a world-killing weapon. Especially since the enemies we're fighting against wouldn't have been able to create something like that themselves. It's that awkward thing where I know war pretty well. We've seen quite a few of them over the years, and it's understandable that things would start feeling desperate. Conventionally speaking, I can easily believe that the Ing have too much going for them, even if we've never actually seen how the Luminoth warriors compare to the Ing on a soldier-for-soldier -soldier basis, or how outnumbered they might be. Still, the enemy managed to gain their energy siphoning device, and suck out most of the damn energy from this version of the world. I just cannot find it in me to feel any sympathy for the Luminoth under this set of circumstances since they are on the brink of doom specifically because they made a doomsday weapon and the enemy got a hold of it. Well, it didn't take long to replenish those five missiles we spent for the first super missile. And thankfully, unlike last time, I am fully aware of the fact that we've gained the ability to use consoles with a different colored geometric pattern. It's nice to know that I won't be making the same mistake twice in the same damn game. I can't really say much about your vigilance since you fought to the last man out here, but I really don't think you've got much in the way of strength at this point, not when the only person who's fighting for your side in this war is the person who didn't even know this war was happening when she arrived. I'm pretty sure I've already bitched about that, but it felt worth reiterating.
right. Another corpse in a room with an elevator. I'm assuming those chemicals are what the enemy used to kill him, and not that the chemicals are hiding the death injuries. Ah, thanks for mentioning it's a digestive fluid. I was starting to worry we'd have to fight against some kind of acid spitter in the future. Now, let's just see where this elevator leads us. Or I could head back for a bit because I can't seem to decide at the moment what direction to explore just yet. I was hoping for some missiles to go with the light energy, but again, I'll take what I can get. Okay, apparently I'm gonna go for the red door back there. Or at least I assume that's what I'm running towards when I decided to head this way. I haven't exactly been great at anticipating my own moves in this, uh, recording session. Apparently, I don't want to bother fighting those lightning lizards. I'm not too sure if that's a good sign, since that's an enemy type I really don't want to deal with, or a bad sign because I'm more cautious to deal with a common enemy than I am to deal with many of the bosses we've conquered just to get this far into the game. And, well, there's a lot of game left still to do. Well, that lore entry didn't give us any new information in any way, shape, or form. But then I suppose not all lore entries are created equal. And apparently that lizard certainly expected us to come back to it. I suppose it's understandable that these things know their home planet better than we do. Still, that sort of thing makes me wish our map gave us more details to work with. It can get a bit silly if I'm planning my route to a given spot, and it turns out we needed something like the grapple beam to get there from that specific angle. Well, we made it to where the red door is, and generally speaking, Red doors have save points on the other side of them. And there we go! We're finally going to get the save after over an hour without one. I probably could have gone to this save point earlier, but... I just didn't think to check this corner for some reason for quite a while. Oh well, time to finally take that break, though it... Looks like I can fit another bit of raw footage into this clip, so maybe break isn't the right word. Eh, I can easily do it and still stay less than half an hour long here. It says something that the sound effect for loading the game is one of the most satisfying sounds in the series. You're back in the planet, time to start wandering around and see what you can discover. Though it's definitely a bad time that I'm fast-forwarding this soon in this new area. I certainly don't remember being quite so fast to fast-forward things in the first Metroid Prime. Well... It's not much of a reason to slow the footage back down, but still, technically we're gaining something new. The musical cue for gaining something doesn't have anywhere near the same effect as the loading the game musical cue to me. It's funny how that works. Anyway, doesn't look like the map uh, gained us all that much after we grabbed the damn thing. 
we've got some areas that look like they should be interesting to get to. Very extensive uh, expansions of this sector, but nothing's really screaming at me that we need to go to that spot in particular in order to make some major progress. Right, nothing on the super missile that says what kind of rocks it can blow apart. I guess that was just more wishful thinking on my part. Guess we're going back to the area where we grabbed the super missile in the first place and start looking into one of the two directions we unlocked there. Again, seems kind of random when we get ammo for the two beams we've got, even though we're doing exactly what the game says we should in order to gain that stuff. Ah, another swarmer type of enemy. Again, I'm pretty surprised that it took us this long to start running into those kinds of things considering they were among the first enemy types we ran into back in the first Metroid Prime. How we ran into those before we even touched down on the planet? And apparently these kinds of swarmers have some kind of ranged attack. It's not really worth worrying about, but it still kind of struck me there. Well, hello there! Sorry, not really a fan of the idea of getting killed by a flower on the wall. Apparently these things are activated in this form if we just happen to roll by within their line of sight. They don't start hostilities if we're not in Morph Ball form, but they will continue it even when we transform. I can't help finding that a little odd, but then we generally find a lot of odd things when we're working with uh, Samus. Really? Not going to elaborate how you managed to create those crystals that can cause healing light in a world where the very air is poison? I was expecting a bit more detail on that process, especially since we never see any of those healing crystals in regular ether, even though those probably would have helped keep your troops alive long enough to actually work alongside Samus. I'm sure the red text there is especially important, but again, I really would have preferred if they just outright told us what weapons to use to break what material in order to move on. Okay, apparently the pirates can slide out in those ramps. Given the little burst of energy we saw when the guy slid down, does that mean they have a special device that we might want to use, or is it just, uh, yeah. I was kind of expecting the commando right next to the Phazon tanks to die when we blew those up. I suppose that was just more wishful thinking. Just like it was wishful thinking for assuming that the missiles would do some damage despite the guy raising that shield. Ah, well, we took them both down even if their shield was a bit annoying to deal with. It could have easily been a good deal worse, and good god, does it feel awkward to say something like that when they managed to bring down a little over 80 points in health even though they were just two of them. Eh. We are most definitely starting to get to a point in this game where fighting against standard enemies just isn't all that fun to do, since they are annoyingly tough, hit hard, and there's generally little to no reward for killing the respawning bastards. Ah well, another portal open, I swear. 
we didn't run into this many portals in the Army Men games, and portals were kind of important there. Well, that certainly looks new. I'm sure this new form of thing is supposed to be rather terrifying to deal with. Okay, so one good shot with the light beam and they die? Sure, they can go more ghostly to avoid taking the shit, but... Somehow they just don't feel as intimidating to look at as the more standard thing. Hell, I'm pretty sure they ended up killing themselves and all I did was waste ammo shooting at them. I am legitimately more terrified of the planet's wildlife than the elite form of the monsters that the enemy wants to use to stop us in our tracks. Eh, though that might be because we were in the healing field when we were fighting them. Anyway, now that they're done, time to start jumping upwards and get to the next room in this toxic world. Well, it's certainly an annoying little trek to the door, considering it's in the same damn room. Though again, maybe room isn't the most accurate term to use for this terrain. So, what's waiting for us in here? Ah, another save point. I don't mind if I do. Full ammo for our missiles as well. Definitely gonna be nice as we keep pushing forward next time. <laughs> 